right, folks. <clears throat> How's it going? The last couple weeks have been really hard. I'm still dealing with my scoliosis in my spine and the arthritis. And I've been to my eighth doctor. And uh, so it's kind of getting discouraging. Uh, two surgeons said I'm not bad enough to have my surgery on my back. But other people, give everybody and their mother has ideas. And, and I've talked to everybody who's had different things done. But uh, I wanted to share this here. This is a... Caleb receives his inheritance. And this is about a week old here. Um, I, I was really encouraged by this. What you might do is go to Joshua 14, stop the video and just read the read the whole text so you can get it, because I'm just going to show you key verses. Because Joshua, a lot of times people talk about faith, our faith, and then we talk about obedience. And then we talk about knowing what's right and wrong, uh, direction, goals, uh, what are we supposed to do in life, uh, you know, different things like that. And as I read Joshua 14, the chapter, Caleb had some interesting things, just little statements, but I try to picture what was this guy's life like during this time period. And I'm going through struggles too when it comes to uh, uh, the Torah, Torah people. Uh, the, the people in my town uh, doing what's right, learning what's right, trying to walk with the Lord. Uh, I get to where I'm almost paranoid of what I say and how I say it because somebody's going to jump on you. Uh, the one thing I found, this is my own opinion, the Torah people are, I don't want to say legalistic because they'll go, oh good, we're legalistic, you know. But it's no, you're, you're intolerant of other people. You're intolerant and you forget what it was like when you first found Torah, when you first found out about Paul, when you first found out that your church and your pastor wasn't teaching you correctly, you forget about where we came from. And all through, uh, the Father keeps reminding us all through the uh, Old Testament, whenever the people were going to go out, he reminded them what, what he did and how they responded or if they did not respond properly. And so uh, we got to continue to think back where we came from. Uh, I, I recently, in the last months, I, the first love, every time I say anything to anybody on Facebook or on my site, and yeah, I know I challenge people with Paul, and I challenge once saved, always saved, and I challenge some of that stuff like that, but uh, I'm getting a taste of what it's like. What I try to do is present a question or something for someone to start thinking about, but people come on and hammer me and hammer me and hammer me. I go to work and come back the next day, and they got... 10 or 15 different posts from the same person. That's called hammering. I understand. You don't have to push the truth on me. You don't have to push the light onto me. You don't even give the Holy Spirit a chance to work. Some of you don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. It's just it's really sad. Joshua 14, 6. This is kind of a, my own personal sharing here. But it's interesting. Joshua 14, 6. You, Joshua, know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning us. He reminded Joshua, you're going to see the his historical record here of the timeline and stuff, but he heard, he had Moses tell him that his feet are going to walk onto the land that his family and his inheritance will be. Can you imagine going into battle knowing that Moses, through the, God, the, man, the man of God, was told by the Father that you're going to walk on the land that you're going to li live in and your, your kids. The boldness, the security feeling. It's not just faith in nothing. It's faith in that God proved a historically record that he can take care of you and bring you through this. See, it just isn't blind faith. It's faith in something. It's something in who. Verse 7 I was 40 years old when I was, when this was said. He was 40 years old. Verse 8b, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. He realized and seen the obedience, the need to obey God so that God could fulfill his covenant or promise or whatever he said to him. See, this whole faith thing, sometimes I'm seeing it's like, I look back at what he said. If I don't spell the name Yeshua right, or, you, or Yahweh right, or any of this, I get jumped on for different things. But for 37 years, that's who I talk to. 
That's who the people around me all know. Father didn't seem to want to send me to hell and knock me out because I wasn't pronouncing or spelling his name exactly right, just because it's a pagan way of doing it. Not everything's pagan because it's not your way. Verse 8b, But I wholly follow the Lord. Oh, I already said that. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children. That's incredible. That one statement. That one statement when they didn't go into the promised land and they got stuck there for 20 years. Eating manna. Can you imagine him on a daily basis? Okay, what am I going to do this week? What am we going to do this next year? What are we going to? When, when's the problem? I, I, I want to do this, but all these people out here aren't obeying God. All these people disobey God, and I get stuck with having to, to work with them and to deal with them. But God told Moses, the man of God, about me personally. He shared through Moses with me personally, is what Caleb said. Think about that, guys. Verse 10, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he has said these and so on, well, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke the words to Moses as this day 85 years old. That's incredible. These 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke these words to Moses. 45 years he hung on to hope. Battles after battles, watching people die, watching people live, watching kids grow up, uh, seeing all the stuff going around him. But he's claiming his first love. He's claiming what the Father said through the man of God. He knows it. He knows the character. He looks at the history of God. He looks at the character of God. Verse 11. I am still strong today as I was before. I'm not strong today. I'm broken and falling apart. 45 years he held on to that promise. Caleb held on to the promise because him and Joshua and even Moses didn't get to go into the promised land because he was so knowledgeable and he spoke to God face to face. Ooh, I said God. Maybe I should have said Yahweh or something or spelled it differently. Or... See, people block stuff out of their mind of what the Spirit is trying to convey because they're, they're uh, so detail-oriented. They're so fallen in love with what we should do or what we shouldn't do or how we should spell it. The one guy had a perfect, I watched the video three quarters of the way through, the guy gave exactly wonderful information on how to spell the Father's name correctly from the original ever text and stuff. I, I, it was wonderful. And then he goes on and starts using Paul's verses to support that too. And I'm going, okay, see, he learned about the Father's name, but he hasn't caught on about Paul yet. Each one of us haven't got it all together yet, guys. How, I don't even want to be around poor people. Their attitude stinks. It may be the right thing, but you sound like a Pharisee to me. I'm sorry to say that. I am still strong, I said that. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. He's reminding Joseph, uh, yeah, Joshua about that. The joy in his heart, can you imagine what it's like after 45 years of all this stuff and fighting different battles and cleaning out and killing people and doing all this hand-to-hand -hand combat and the Lord's behind you and you don't have a scratch, you don't have a dent, you're still as strong as you was. And now I'm here. I think it was Hebron is where he was, was and he said, don't worry, I'll, I'll go take, take all the people out because I know what to do because the Father's already taught me how to do it. He's with me. He's with me. I'll go take him out. 12b, I will drive them out just as the Lord said and spoke on that day. You can say, people say, oh, there's no day when you're born again. There's no specific day. Yeah, there is. On this day. Those words is what he held on to because he knows the character of the Father. On that day, I will drive them out just as the Lord said, spoke on that day. Verse 13, Then Joshua blessed him, and he gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of 
Jefua, who, whatever his name is, for an inheritance. He gave him to a, a whole bunch of land and killed a bunch of people. You say, oh, that's awful terrible. They were living away from God. The best, most loving thing that God can do is wipe out an entire community that's in sin, that's hurting him themselves. Verse 14b, was it his faith? Was God's, God's grace? What was it? Because he, Caleb, wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. He followed him. He learned his character. He seen his miracles. He understood his, his testaments and his, his uh, commandments and his laws and his statutes and all that stuff. He said, if I do all this stuff, this will make me a better man. This will bring me into a better place. That's why I'm doing these videos. I, there's millions of videos out there on religious stuff. None of us have it all together. But do you know him? And I'm taking a stand too on this whole is Jesus God thing or whatever. He was a created being and all. I just can't grasp how people cannot imagine that God the creator, one God, can not create himself into a human being and show and die for his people. All of his character, all of his who he is, not his vastness, not he's still holding the world together, but he can do that. You don't think he can, that's so sad. All these years, I can't deny all that. It was leading me to where I'm at today. I've dealt with the fear of man. I've dealt with uh, sicknesses. I, I, we had some, another person die. I didn't make it to the viewing. I might go to the funeral tomorrow. And people are dying all around me. I'm in people's homes where the guy said well, he was in hospital all the time during over Thanksgiving. And I felt I didn't need a pacemaker. I'm starting to finish up the deck, and it's like I just felt like I hate the word feel, but I was overcome with, okay, let's stop and pray. He goes, what? I said, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay my hands on you and pray for you. That's life. That's where we're at. It's not just in church. People condemn me. Oh, you don't speak the right stuff because you don't go to church. You're not part of a system. You didn't go to a seminary. I have a relationship. I've gone through hard times. I've angered the Lord. I know his wrath. I know his love and his forgiveness. And I know his direction. So many people have no clue, have told me they have no clue what the voice of the Lord sounds like. And that saddens me. Because the church has all these false Jesuses they're preaching. And they're trying to, this other funeral I didn't go to because I didn't want to hear what the pastor had to say, this watered down garbage to comfort people. When it disasters like this you should be crying out to the father how can i get myself right with you but all this grace teaching all this faith teaching they want god to do everything that's not what he says he said i want you to do it for me i'm god i deserve it father god thank you for this time father i pray if this if whatever i said is wrong that your holy spirit will block it out of their minds but if anything i shared will help them be more obedient to you. Obedience is showing the Father love and not the fear of man. Please guide us and direct us, Lord. The end times could be 20 years, 50 years, 5 years, who knows what it could be. But Father, if we keep focused on you, your words, your counsel, the son, your words of your Son, and his faithful disciples, the true apostles, Guide us, Lord. I know there's all kinds of testaments. I know there's books that are missing. I could go get brain damaged, Father, with all the different informations that are out there, but I've got to walk with what I know, what I know like Caleb did. I've got to walk with the God of Israel that I know. The Son who woke me up, the Holy Spirit that convicted me of my sins. The day, that night at the table, and I got off the throne of my life and said, Father, Lord Jesus, take over. You run my life, and I'll learn to obey. Thank you so much. Amen.